1934 was a year of extremes. The Great Depression continued to ravage world economies, drought scorched the Midwest into a dust bowl of ruined farmland, and Roosevelt's New Deal was a year into its plan for relief, recovery, and reform. The automotive industry was hit hard. While car sales plummeted and production in some companies withered to as much as 50% off previous records, Walter P. Chrysler finished 1933 with a flourish and turned substantial losses from his previous year into stellar gains. Chrysler was the only car company to have produced more cars in 1934 than in 1929, and he was ready to unveil his crowning achievement, the airflow. The story of the airflow is epic, Six years of secretive research, engineering, design, and testing for a radical new approach to the automobile from the tires up. The world was hungry for something positive and inspiring, and the airflow with its reconfigured aerodynamic contours was a stunning departure from anything the public had ever seen. Walter Chrysler's stellar design team, Zeter, Skelton, and Breer, dubbed the Three Musketeers, along with Tobe Couture, Chrysler's top test driver, started with a single premise. An automobile should be designed around the human body while embracing the physics of aerodynamics to streamline its shape, to create an air path of least resistance. Both Carl Breer and Fred Zeter sensed that they were on the verge of revolutionizing the automobile. Breer was drawn to aerodynamic studies. His observations of flight from geese to airplanes and a legendary anecdote about holding his arm out the window of his car to measure wind resistance, compelled him to want to reshape the body of the automobile. The design team even consulted with the Wright brothers to build a wind tunnel at the Chrysler plant. In one famous wind tunnel experiment, it was discovered that current autos, because of their inherited carriage-like shape, move 30% more efficiently if driven backwards. Fred Cedar, during a recuperative stay at the famous Mayo Clinic, befriended William and Charles Mayo and was allowed access to countless surgeries to further understand the complexities of the human organic system. He was also inspired by the Mayo brothers' approach to scientific inquiry, research, and application. Cedar would carry this template back to Detroit and the Musketeers and reform the whole of Chrysler engineering around its methodology. Much of the credit for the airflow and ongoing Chrysler engineering projects is owed to the Mayo brothers. Their friendship with the Chrysler engineer marks a milestone for collaboration and cross-pollination between industry and health. Breer and Zeter's research and experiments morphed into a design for one of the most influential cars in automotive history. Even though production difficulties kept it from being a sales success, the airflow set a new course for automotive engineering. Everyone else would soon follow. The car you are driving today, in one way or another, can trace its DNA back to the Chrysler engineered airflow. Walter Chrysler called it the first real motor car since the invention of the automobile. The airflow with its long waterfall grille swept back in an arc toward the windshield a look that shocked the public, who were used to the generic box silhouettes of all previous production cars, included so many innovative features that to this day the car stands as a paradigm. It was a concept car brought to life. The lists of firsts was breathtaking. Curved windshields for the imperial airflow, unibody construction, automatic overdrive, tube tires, a pedal starting system, a reserve gas feature, front seat room for three, rear passenger seating at the same level as the front, seat suspension frame from deco chrome tubing, even an interior hood latch. The magnificent airflow remains an enduring example of visionary daring. Even though he did not live long enough to receive accolades, Walter P. Chrysler knew that he and his team had changed the 20th century.